Let G be a finite group. Here are two problems on elements of order two. First problem, if the order of G is even, then we want to show there are an odd number of elements of order two. Second problem, G is abelian. Here we'll write the group multiplication as addition. Then we want to show if we take the sum over all elements of the group, there are two possibilities. If there's a unique element of order two, then our sum is going to be equal to that element. Otherwise, the sum is equal to zero. Now, when is there a unique element of order two? If we write our finite abelian group as a product of cyclic groups, we'll have to have exactly one factor with even order. Now, let's look at the first problem. Since the order of our group is even, special case of Cauchy's theorem says, okay, since two divides the order of the group, there's gonna be at least one element of order two. So what we're gonna show is there's an odd number of elements of order two in our group. Now, to do that, we're just gonna count the number of elements in G, and we're gonna take a look at three different types of elements. For the first type, we have the identity element, and there's exactly one element of that type. If we consider the elements of G that are not equal to their own inverse, then those elements are gonna occur in pairs, G, G inverse, and we note the inverse of G inverse is just equal to G, so these pairs are closed under inversion. Now, that means we'll get another 2K elements where K is the number of these pairs. Finally, we're left with the elements where G is equal to G inverse, but G is not the identity. If we multiply through by G, then we have G squared is the identity, but G is not the identity. So these are just gonna be the elements of order two. Now, if we count all of these elements, that's gonna sum up to be some even number 2n. For that to happen, I would have to have an odd number of elements of order two. And that's our result. Now, let's look at some examples. First, let's look at the permutation group on three letters. So here I have the identity element, the elements of order three occur in an inverse pair, then we have three elements of order two. So our result holds. Next, if I look at the quaternion group, we have the identity element, the elements of order four occur in inverse pairs. That leaves us with a unique element of order two, which is minus one. Finally, let's look at an abelian group. So I'm gonna take a product of Z mod two with itself n times. Now, here we'll have two to the n minus one elements of order two. Okay, so we have two to the n elements in the group and we throw away the identity. Then every other element has order two. So again, we have an odd number of elements of order two for our result. For the second part, we assume that G is abelian. We'll have the same breakdown of our elements. Since we're writing group multiplication as addition, okay, we'll write the identity element as zero. For inverse pairs, we'll have G and minus G. And then what's left over are elements of order two. We sum over the elements of the group. We'll have our identity element, we'll have our inverse pairs canceling out to give us zero. And then I'm left with the sum over all the elements of order two. Now, if I consider all the elements of order two with the identity, that's gonna form a subgroup. So I'll leave that as an exercise. Call this subgroup G2. Now, by the fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups, we'll have that G2 can be written as a product of Z2 groups. So say there's N of them. 
We don't need to pull out the fundamental theorem. We could actually show this with induction. And again, I'll leave that as an exercise. Now, two possibilities. If there's only one factor here, then if I take the sum over all these elements, we're just gonna be left with the unique element of order two. So that's our first case. If we have more than one factor, okay, we're gonna add up all the elements in this product group here. So what we're doing is we're adding all tuples of one and zero. And we're gonna take all possibilities. So if we think about the number of ways I could put a one, say in this first coordinate, there are gonna be two to the n minus first power of those. So we add up overall elements, we're gonna get two to the n minus one, which is gonna to go to zero. We do that for each coordinate, then we see that the sum over all elements of order two is gonna be equal to, okay, the zero tuple, which is gonna be our identity element in this group here. So in our original G, we'll get zero. And that's our second case. For examples, let's start with Z mod five under addition. Here, there are no elements of order two. If we take the sum, we get 10, which goes to zero under mod five addition. So that agrees with our result. If we consider Z mod six under addition. Here, we have a unique element of order two, that's three. We take the sum, I get 15, which goes to three under mod six addition. So we get our unique element of order two, and that agrees with our result. Finally, let's try a group with some factors. So I'll take Z mod two times Z mod four under addition. Okay, in this case, we have three elements of order two. So we're expecting to get back the identity element in the group, which is gonna be zero, zero. Now, if we add up the elements that are not of order two, we get two comma eight. So that's gonna to go to zero, zero in our group. So we're left with the elements of order two, and that goes to the element two comma four, which then goes to zero, and our result checks out. 